Hello everyone. I would like to show you my do-it-yourself off-grid uh, garden pump. So the top part is the standard manual pump. You can use this to to prime to prime the pipe that's in the ground, and then with an easy installation also connected an electric pump to it. You use this lever to close the valve right here and then the pipe stays primed for the electric pump. Of course initially when you first set this up you need to have water poured in this pump as well. You need to prime the pump as well. But after that you no longer need to do that if you have no leaks in your system uh, and uh, <clears throat> this pump for example has been primed for two weeks now so you just plug it in the pump starts and you can start the garden hose i need both hands So the first thing to keep in mind when starting a project like this is to know where to dig. Uh, the way I did it is um, I checked the low spot on the land here where after a huge rainstorm the water accumulated on the surface of the ground and I assume there's gonna be uh, a bigger chance that I'm going to find water there. Uh, you also need to keep in mind that the soil you're going to dig into needs to have as few as possible large root systems or stones in it so this way digging it is a lot easier i'm not even sure if you can dig in a ground uh, filled with uh, large stones and gravels because you just ruin your uh, your earth auger so the way i did it is i have uh, uh, soil without uh, any stones or roots right here and uh, this is our, also our garden and I bought one of these uh, cheap earth augers manual earth augers from uh, Amazon I believe and the way this works is uh, you you rotate and uh, it digs itself into the ground and then you pull it out of the soil and uh, remove the soil from between the blades and then you when you're far enough you just uh, add another one of these uh, uh, metal adapters to it so that you can keep digging down so i i bought a six meter one which is about 18 feet and uh, this pump is in the ground about uh, 16 feet I believe in total so digging down with an earth auger like this is a tremendous physical effort so the way I did it is I actually called a friend of mine <clears throat> my wife's brother and uh, we added some uh, some wood handles to this so that it's longer so that the lever action is uh, easier on us and we added one on this end one on that end I grabbed it with both hands on this end my friend grabbed it from the other side and we just walked in circle with it once it was full we both picked it and we we raised the earth out together now when you dig it's important that you put the earth that you dug out in order in sequence because it's the same sequence that you're going to have to put the earth back so don't just pull out the earth and put it all in one pile you need to separate the different uh, layers of ground that you dig out once you know where to dig before starting to dig uh, of course you have to first purchase the the earth auger that i just showed you and uh, then you're gonna need a uh, galvanized pipe now this one is five sixths of an inch 
pipe. You can use one inch pipe, you can use a smaller, larger diameter. Um, I don't believe it matters that much. What is important is to be able to put it in the ground uh, and reach the groundwater level with it. So you might have to first dig down and uh, see where you can locate water and after that you will know what size of pipe you should buy. In this case, on this land, I knew what size of pipe I need and I was able to purchase it because I just asked the neighbors uh, how deep they dug their well. So one end, the one that goes into the ground, needs to have a pointy end so that once you've dug down and reached the water level and the soil starts to collapse inwards you are able to beat it down a couple of feet more, one or two feet more so that you're uh, in that uh, sandy soil where the uh, water accumulates. So the end is pointy and uh, it has some holes drilled into it like uh, one or two feet worth of uh, small holes drilled all around at the bottom and then the top it has uh, um, it has this so that you can uh, actually um, screw the other components onto it so once the pipe is in the ground you're gonna need a T that's what we call it here it's a it's a T and then I have here a uh, a reduction one with a uh, with a tap and then I have a uh, this is a uh, one sense, so the water can only travel one sense through it. And then you add your polyethylene uh, pipe that you connect to the uh, <coughs> to the pump. So of course you're gonna need a pump as well. And above that, I have another tap. This one uh, makes it possible to switch between the manual pump and the electric one and uh, you this way you make sure that the pipe keeps itself primed when using it uh, either way <coughs> you can just leave this one open at all times uh, i'm not even sure if this one is necessary actually because if uh, all of your uh, conduit is completely uh, water and airtight then uh, this, this pipe should never draw in air from uh, this side. But just as a, a secondary safety measure, you can install this as well. So uh, <coughs> then you have this tap and right above it in this one, uh, you can screw in your standard manual pump. The other thing that I purchased is uh, it's this one right here so this is a filter uh, one inch in one inch out fil sand filter because in the beginning these uh, what's that over there uh, it's a little bug hello little bug hello little bug what you doing fly away okay so the way this works is you can add this to the system and uh, it works you can see the arrow how it works so you add it to the system and it basically filters out uh, sand particles if your pump is pulling up sand and uh, in the beginning when you first start using this pump uh, rather it's manual or electric it's gonna be pumping uh, up uh, sand so it's unavoidable because the way these pumps work is it's basically a straw in the ground and you put it under vacuum it starts pulling the the water out and uh, the end of it is a, is a submerged in sand so it has to make itself a, ba a basin right there where the water can accumulate so that you have constant pressure so in order for that to happen you need to remove the sand out of it the way i did it is i've been using this pump manually for over a year and i kept uh, pumping up uh, sand with this and uh, this doesn't uh, 
this doesn't get really hurt with sand. You just you just change the valve here every once in a while because the the plastic tends to uh, scratch away and it does, starts working uh, worse and worse. But uh, this is this is a real a much faster way because you can just start the pump and once the sand is accumulated here, you just uh, remove the cap, empty it, wash it down, and put it back and start the pump over again. So I've had no issues without this filter either. Um, the thing to keep in mind is this is like a $50, $60 pump, the cheapest I could get. And it's a 1.1 kilowatt pump that uh, is self-priming. You had the water there. And uh, <coughs> it says on the, on the paper that it's able to uh, suck up particles of up to uh, 0.3 millimeters or 3 millimeters, something like that. So it's basically a, a dirty water vacuum self-priming pump. <coughs> Something else to keep in mind with pumps like this is that they don't like the cold. So if you have water in them and uh, there's frost, it's going to uh, break the pump. So it's highly advisable during winter time or when you know that it's going to be cold that you <coughs> release the water from the tank from here, from the bottom. You empty it completely. You close all valves and uh, you unprime it. And um, it's also advisable to uh, pour a concrete pad below this pump. Uh, because it needs to be in a perfect horizontal position uh, and needs to be screwed down into the concrete so that uh, the vibrations uh, do not degrade the pump over time. Uh, it also has to have a small, uh, a small roof above it. So that's going to be my next project. So I've been using this tool together with the pump. Uh, you just attach a garden hose to it and it's, uh, it sprays water in, uh, in both directions and it has like a concave way of spreading water and uh, I've been leaving the pump on for a couple of hours at a time, been using it for a couple of weeks now and there have been no problems with it. And the earth auger is also a handy tool to have because uh, since I have it, had it, I thought I'd add some uh, posts in to make a fence. So that's a really good tool to have. You'll not only be using it for one project, maybe many, many more. <laughs> 